Welcome to the final of four presentations to help prospective candidates learn more about BC general local elections. So you've been declared a candidate and have been busy campaigning. This presentation will give you an overview of the different voting opportunities, your responsibilities, and taking office if you are elected. All local governments will hold advanced voting on Wednesday, October 10th. Local governments with populations greater than 5,000 are required to hold at least two advanced voting opportunities. Check your local government's election procedure bylaw for details on advanced voting opportunities. Your local government will also publish details about advanced voting. Candidates may wish to vote in advance because they may be busy on general voting day. Local governments may hold special voting opportunities at places like hospitals and long-term care facilities to provide electors who may not otherwise be able to attend a voting place an opportunity to cast their ballots. Through their election bylaw, some local governments allow mail ballot voting for those electors unable to attend a special, advance, or general voting opportunity. Generally, mail ballot voting is intended to allow non-resident property electors, seasonal residents, and electors in geographically remote locations an opportunity to cast their ballot in the election. The big day, what can you expect on General Voting Day? General Voting Day will take place on Saturday, October 20th. Voting places will be open from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. local time. Your local government will provide you with information about the location of voting places. Candidates may only be present at a voting place to cast their ballot, but must not campaign or place signs within 100 meters of a voting place during special, advance, or general voting. After the polls close, election officials begin the ballot count. Candidates and candidate representatives, like scrutineers or the official agent, may observe the ballot counting process. The local chief election officer will provide you with information about observing the ballot count. The chief election officer may release preliminary results after the ballots have been counted, while official results must be announced by October 24th at 4 p.m. local time. If the same number of votes was received by two or more candidates, the Chief Election Officer must refer the election for a judicial recount. Under specific legislated circumstances, an eligible elector, candidate, candidate representative, or the local CEO may apply to the provincial court for a judicial recount. This application must be made within nine days of the close of general voting day. After the election, all candidates, whether they have been elected by voting or acclamation or have withdrawn or lost the election, must file a campaign financing disclosure statement with Elections BC by January 18th, 2019. Congratulations, you've made it through the election and now you can take the oath of office and attend your first meeting. Every municipal council member and electoral area director must make an oath of office or solemn affirmation before they can assume their positions. Oaths and affirmations must be made within 45 days after the official election results are announced. Municipal council members formally take office at the first regularly scheduled council meeting following the general elections which must be in the first 10 days of November. The term of office for regional district electoral area directors begins at the first regularly scheduled board meeting in November. Thank you for making a commitment to your local community. Please watch the videos available on the Ministry of Municipal Affairs and Housing's web pages on the characteristics of locally elected officials local government decision-making, and the roles and responsibilities of locally elected officials.